Welcome again to our Bible study, and this is part two of witnessing, sharing our witness or the importance of witnessing for the Lord. Let's go in a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we have gathered on this day to thank you for all of the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, and we thank you for the blessing and the privilege of being able to study your holy word. God, allow your word to become a part of our everyday living. Help us to hide your word in our hearts in order that we may not sin against you. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. In part one, we left off talking about lessons from the man who brought his brother to Jesus Christ. And we looked at John chapter 1 verses 35 through 42, and in there we were trying to pattern ourselves after Andrew. And one of the things that we, some of the things rather, that we learned from Andrew is, is that Andrew thought of his brother. We must think of others if we're going to win them to Jesus Christ. And that all of our actions are born out of attitudes and thought. Right attitudes will equal right action. Second of all, all people without Christ are lost. The good, the moral, the religious, the honest, the upright, the young, the old, the rich, the poor, the literate, the illiterate, they're all lost without Jesus. And then we learn that after Andrew thought of his brother, Andrew sought him. Note John chapter 1, verse 41. He first findeth his own brother, Simon. Andrew got up, he went out, and actively got involved in looking for his brother. Don't ever forget that there will never be a substitute for the go in gospel. In part one, I told you that the first two letters of the word gospel is G-O. And notice what the master tells us over in Matthew chapter 28. Go ye therefore into all of the world. We have been commanded. It, it, it is not a suggestion. It's not a request. But it is a command to go. Go and find those who are lost. And we left off talking in part one about Philip being another example of a man who went seeking the lost. He went seeking the lost residents of Samaria. And the Bible says that he preached to them. All Christians need to do the very same thing. God may call some to go into some foreign country in order to be a missionary. He may call some to go across the state in order to be a pastor or an evangelist. But all of us who are saved have been sent. We've been sent to those individuals who are around us. It's our duty to think of them, to pray for them, to witness to them as the Holy Spirit leads and opens up the door. After Andrew found Simon, the Bible says he taught him. He told Simon that he had found the Messiah. He taught Simon that Jesus was the Christ of the Old Testament. He taught him who Jesus was and what Jesus had come to do. And this is the message of every soul winner. This message needs to come across to others by the way in which we live. Again, this so-called lifestyle evangelism that we hear so much about today is nothing new. Those who are saved have always been taught from the Word of God that their lives should reflect Christ to a lost world. What we say will never be received by the lost 
unless it is backed up by a lifestyle. We are ambassadors for Christ. We're to represent him before others every day of our life. If we're to be effective in our witnessing to others, we mustn't limit the message of Jesus, not just even simply to our lifestyle, but the message of Christ must also be carried to others by word. We must verbalize Jesus Christ. The Bible says Andrew told Simon about the Savior. And that's what we need to learn to do. The message of salvation must be told to other people. Everyone needs to know how to use the scripture and tell others how to know Christ as their Savior. If you're unaware of your ability to tell others how to be saved, again, you need to set that as a goal right now. Learn the scripture, commit the scripture to memory, and that way they'll never be misplaced. Andrew thought of his brother. He sought his brother. He taught him about the Messiah. And finally, he brought him to Christ. John chapter 1 and verse 42 tells us that Andrew brought his brother Simon to Christ. And that's an important goal. In fact, this is the most important goal for all who are winning someone to Jesus Christ. Don't ever give up on anyone without teaching and reaching this wonderful goal. Consider what a great thing Andrew did for his brother by bringing him to Jesus Christ. He brought him into a whole new life. And there's no better life to be lived than the life of one who is saved. He brought him into a new association. He's now associated with Christ and with those who are followers of Jesus Christ. You will never have any closer friend than your Christian friend. He brought him not only into a new life, not only into a new association, but he brought him into a new vocation. Peter the fisherman soon became Peter the great disciple and preacher. Because you do know that if you read over in the book of Acts, it was Peter who preached on the day of Pentecost. And the Bible said from his preaching, 3,000 souls were added to the church. All of these wonderful changes came all because Andrew loved his brother enough to go out and find him and bring him to Christ. And shouldn't we find joy in doing the same thing for other people? Well, let's look just for a few moments at some Bible examples and how to win others to Christ. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30 tells us, he that winneth souls is wise. Oh, I don't know about you, but he that winneth souls is wise. You can be wise just by winning a soul to the kingdom. There's great wisdom in witnessing of Jesus Christ before other people. It truly is a business that brings about a blessing. The Bible is filled with many wonderful, true accounts of faithful soul winners who brought people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And these stories that we find in the Bible are there for our benefit. Andrew teaches us how to win others by our love. We have just really looked at the account of Andrew bringing his brother Simon to Jesus. And the lesson here is that it was love that motivated him. Look, first to those you love and see if any of them are without Christ. Love ought to motivate us to witness to the lost. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14, for the love of Christ 
constrain it for us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then all have died. What a contrast. What a contrast. What a contrast Andrew is to Cain, who asked the Lord, am I my brother's keeper? Philip also teaches us to witness and to win the lost by obedience. Acts chapter 8, verses 27 through 40, Philip obeyed, and his obedience played a major role in the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. Philip obeyed the Lord's leading, and he found a man whose heart was tender and who was just waiting for someone to teach him about Jesus Christ. There are many more just like this man in the world all around us. They're just waiting for someone to teach them about Jesus Christ. And God expects all of us who are saved to be a witness at one time or another in our lives. When the Holy Spirit convicts you to speak to someone about the Lord and you do not, then that just simply means that you have been disobedient to the Lord. We need to learn to listen to that still, small voice inside and then be obedient in witnessing where he leads. Peter teaches us to witness with confidence in the Holy Spirit. If you would read the story of Peter leading Cornelius and many of his relatives to Christ that's found over in the book of Acts chapter 10. Peter didn't really want to go to the house of Cornelius. Peter was still hanging on to a little of the Jewish law and he was really unwilling to enter the house of a Gentile. But evidently, he had never done so before. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 20, the Holy Spirit tell Peter, get up to go with the three men of Cornelius that Cornelius had sent to find him and said, doubt nothing. We must learn to trust the leadership of the Holy Spirit when we witness to other individuals. It's the Holy Spirit's job to lead us, to empower us, to teach us. The Christian never witnessed alone. He has the constant and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit to accomplish him. It is vital that we learn to lean upon God, to trust God, lean upon the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as we witness to other individuals. Many Christians have believed the devil's lie, that they don't have what it takes to witness to someone and to lead that person to Jesus Christ. If you are saved, you already have the Holy Spirit living within you. I don't have to go anywhere in order to get the Holy Spirit. For the moment I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, the Holy Spirit took up residence in my life. Now all I need to do now is allow the Holy Spirit to mature me, to grow me, into the fullness of what God would have me be. The Holy Spirit's presence in our life guarantees that we have what it takes to become effective witnesses for Jesus. Paul teaches us how to win others to Christ by this thing of continuing. Acts chapter 26 and verse 22. But God protected me so that I am still alive today to tell these facts to everyone, both great and small. 
I teach nothing except what the prophet and Moses said. The apostle Paul continued witnessing. Notice, he suffered heartache and pain. He suffered shipwreck, imprisonment, beatings, cursing, many other dangers. But yet Paul continued to tell others about the gospel. The lesson here is really a lesson about faithfulness. Don't ever give up. Many people are won to Jesus Christ only after years of prayer and witnessing. We must have an unstoppable spirit if we are to be successful in winning others to Jesus Christ. We must not be pushy. We must not be arrogant in our witnessing. But neither shall we give up on others too easily. There are three simple steps to winning someone to Jesus Christ. Everyone ought to learn to set goals for their life. Some should be short-range goals, while others should be long-range goals. Too many people set all of their goals, however, in the material realm of life. They set goals to build great bank accounts, goals to pay off debt, the goal to get that or to live the American dream. And while there's nothing wrong with setting these kinds of goals, there is a realm to life other than the material realm, and that is the spiritual. We need to set some spiritual goals for ourselves every year. And one such goal would be to win at least one person to Christ every year. But setting goal is useless unless we also have a plan to reach the goal. The last part of this lesson is designed to help us make goals and to win others to Jesus Christ. After the read, if you read the story of Philip, a deacon of the church in Jerusalem that's found in Acts chapter 8. The Bible says that Philip went to Samaria to preach Jesus Christ to the lost in that village. He was having great success when the Lord told him to go out unto the desert to wait for one man who would come riding by who needed to be saved. Can you imagine you're having great success and then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit tells you to leave and go to another place and to just wait on one person. But we are never to neglect the importance of one person. If there had only been one sinner in all the world, Jesus still would have come and died for just that one sinner. And that's how important one soul is to our God. Philip was a willing worker. Philip was available to the Lord. You and I must learn to be available to the Lord if we are to win others. Too many people today are busy in other things that will not make any eternal difference in the lives of others. Ask yourself this question. What on earth am I doing for heaven's sake? What are you doing that will make an eternal difference? Acts chapter 8 and verse 26 shows the Lord called to Philip. Acts chapter 8 and verse 27 gives us Philip's response. No excuses were made to God as to why it later would be better to leave Samaria. Philip simply got up and went out. He was totally available to the Lord at any time on any day. If he had made an excuse at all or if he had delayed his leaving, he would have missed his opportunity to witness to the Ethiopian. 
the Ethiopian chariot was passing by at a specific time and in a specific place. Philip was in the right place at the right time to witness for Jesus Christ. We may miss many opportunities because we are not always available to the Lord. And someone has said that the greatest ability that any person can have is availability. Am I available to do the will of my God? Philip trusted the witnessing spirit to lead him. We will never be effective in witnessing to others unless we too learn to rely upon the help and the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no substitute for the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. The word of the Lord will give us that kind of power. The Bible lets us know it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord of hosts. We can look nice. We can smell good. We can even act nice. We can have it all right on the outside, but without the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside, we will be fruitless. We must know what it is to yield ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit if we're going to be effective in our witnessing for others. Philip had a working knowledge of the scripture because we can find in Acts chapter 8 and verse 35, we can find Philip open the scripture to the book of Isaiah, preach Christ to the Ethiopian eunuch from these scriptures. He couldn't have done this unless he had studied, unless he had had prior knowledge of the word of God. And you and I need the same knowledge before we will be able to lead others to Christ. The soul winning message will be the most valuable tool that we have. The message isn't complex. In fact, it's a simple message. We need to learn and we need to know how to follow the steps and the scriptures in order to lead someone to Christ. First, prove that the one to whom you are witnessing is a sinner and need to be saved. You can never lead someone to Christ who's not first lost and need a savior. Romans chapter 3 and verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Unless those three, two verses rather, unless those verses is in your memory bank that you can use them because you will be able to use those verses to prove from the Bible that everyone is a sinner. Therefore, everyone needs to be saved. We ought to show individuals as well the wages of sin or the fact that there is a price connected to sin. We've heard this scripture out of Romans 6, 23 that says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now the first part of that verse shows from the Bible that the wages of sin is death. Point out that to die without Christ is to die without hope, to die lost. The only alternative to salvation is to spend eternity in a place that the Bible calls hell. Show individual that Jesus died to pay the sin debt of the one to whom you are witnessing. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Point out to individual that Jesus died for us. He died to pay our sin debt. He died that we might live eternally. Some believe that Christ died for us already 
And we don't need to do anything more that allow him to die. In other words, they believe that everybody is already saved when they are born because Jesus died for everyone. But you must prove that they have a responsibility to accept Jesus Christ for themselves. John chapter 1 and verse 12, yet for all who receive him, he gave power to become the sons of God to those who believe in his name. Also, in Romans 6, 23, the last part of that verse teaches that salvation is a gift. And since it's a gift, it must simply be received. A gift isn't really a gift until it has been willingly received. A gift cannot be forced upon a person. It must be taken willingly and without any strings attached. The fourth step to show how a decision to trust Christ is made is found in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. But if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will, we will, we will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Note the Bible says, confess with the mouth. Pray, believe with your heart, and we shall be saved. That leaves no room for doubt if you take God at his word. Calling upon Christ by faith will bring salvation. Romans chapter 10, verse 13, for everyone who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I like that. For whosoever, and that tells me that anyone and everyone can be saved if they will simply trust Christ by faith, do his work, and do his work in their life. There's no such thing as someone who is too great a sinner to be forgiven. No matter how bad you have been, no matter how great your sins are, you can still be saved. Draw near to him. In fishing for men, we mustn't just go out, give out the wonderful message of salvation, and leave without giving the one to whom we have witnessed an opportunity to trust Jesus Christ and be saved. We need to ask that person if they're willing to bow their head and simply pray a simple prayer of faith, asking the Lord to forgive them of their sin and give him his free gift of eternal life. God will bless you as you use these methods to carry this wonderful message of salvation to other people. You will be able to help that person get into the kingdom. The only eternal business in which we can all engage in is the business of witnessing to lost people everywhere, pointing them to Jesus Christ so that they might be saved. We who have been saved have been left in this world with a mission. That mission is to bring glory to God and to win others to Christ. The reasons are many which prove the urgency of our mission. The lost are dying by the thousands every day. God has commanded us to win the lost. We are debtors to others. We must tell them of the gospel. Lives can be changed in a wonderful way if they are one to Christ. There come a time to stop talking and start walking. That means, of course, there's a time for action. We need to pray, rely upon the Holy Spirit, equip ourselves by memorizing scripture,
Then go out and witness to others. God will help each of us to engage ourselves more in this greatness, the greatest of all business, this business that brings a blessing, this business that win others to Christ. Go out, share your witness. In the name of Christ, let us pray. God, we thank you for this time that we've had with you on this day. Bless us and keep us forever in your will and in your way. For it is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.